So we have talked about CSRF so many times in our earlier videos, right? So I'm not gonna uh, talk like or explain what is the CSRF again. But there's a there's a concept of sim side cookie, and and I apparently got a lot of questions on on whether this is a good defense or not, or or how can we bypass. So today's focus is to learn more about the sim side uh, feature uh, of the cookie, and then we'll see how it affects the CSRF, and and we'll we'll talk uh, like in depth about why the CSRF or why the same site was introduced or how is it helpful to prevent the CSRF, why Chrome adopted it, why the browsers are adopt adopting it and then how it is safe or not safe uh, for protecting the CSRF. So please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and let's get into it. So primarily CSRF occurs when the browser attaches the session cookie in the request, right? So if I send you a malicious request, you click on it and of course, we have seen that before. Uh, one of the previous video, I have actually explained how you can uh, exploit the CSRF and also exploit the CSRF token. Like they have anti-CSRF token, you can still bypass it using one of the AJAX requests. I have demoed that in the previous video. So do check it out. But the, the main reason behind the CSRF is the browser attaches the session token. So there is no easy way for application to know whether the request is coming from legitimate user or one of the spoofed user or attacker. So can we not prevent this by not sending the session cookie? Of course, right? Like if you don't send the cookie, then yeah, the, the problem is solved and, and the CSRF is gone. But then how do you do that? And that is when uh, we have the same site uh, attribute uh, or feature uh, of the cookie. So same site is the cookie will only be sent if the request is coming from or originating from the same site. So for, uh, for example, let's say you are on a.com domain and then you are uh, requesting, like you're going on to other page, let's say a.com slash uh, index.html. That's where this cookie, uh, the browser will send the cookie because the origin of the request was the same one where the cookie was assigned to. The cross site request would be if the the, like you know the cookie is attached to the a.com right and if b.com is requesting or originating request to a.com then this would be a cross site uh, one of the other examples simple example I would tell you is let's say when you when you want to log into one of like you know one of the blog or one of the website on the internet and it says log in with the Google when you click on log in with the Google the request actually goes to the Gmail or Google domain and in that case the google will not attach if the google does not attach the the cookie then you will not be able to uh, like you know uh, you will not be able to fetch the google cookie then you have to re-authenticate to google so that is what the cross-site communication is now there are three flavors in the same site one there is none like default right one there is lax and one there is strict um, We'll start with the none, which is like a default behavior of the internet, uh, uh, which is like, okay, if I if I uh, if I'm a user, I'm like you know logged into my mybank.com, mybank.com, my bank will give me like you know session ID, which is ABC, and and the domain will be set to mybank.com. When the attacker uh, actually uh, like you know I'm I'm now somehow on the attacker side. Uh, of course through phishing or wishing or something and then it is trying to uh, send a get request to mybank.com then uh, of course like uh, browser will attach the my bank session ID ABC and, and the request will be successful irrespective of whether it's a get or post request right that's a simple behavior with the cross site and, and everyone is happy with this but then we have the CSRF issue because the browser is now attaching this session ID which they shouldn't. To mitigate that scenario, we have a strict attribute. What the strict attribute is, when the user logs into mybank.com, again, it will have session ID, it will have the session domain to mybank.com. Now, when the user is fished and visiting attacker.com and it initiate the request, let's say get or post, the browser will not attach the cookie because right now our attribute is strict so it will not attach this session or any cookie which is attached to domain mybank.com so when when the the request goes to mybank.com 
it will realize oh uh, the user is not authenticated let's redirect user back to the login that's the general behavior for any application if you if you're not logged in so this is the most defensive options but now this this can like you know uh, impair the user experience because if a logged in user follows a third party link to a site then they will appear not to be logged in and will will need to log in again before interacting with the site in the normal way so for example uh, let's say if you if you go to the uh, if you are reading some blog and then one of the links says oh follow here for like you know go to this amazon or, or at least in the youtube you have seen like many people uh, put their affiliated links and when you click on it 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 will show up like amazon product you have to buy and then once you click on hit, hit click and and buy if you're logged in and you can buy seamlessly just imagine if you're clicking on that link you are logged in in amazon but on the other tab but you're clicking from youtube to amazon but the browser will not attach the amazon cookie so that that page will ask you to log in again so that's a bad user experience and we, do, we don't want to uh, like you know we don't want want that to have like user have bad experience so that's why this option was is not highly used in in the modern application so this is not a good one the next we have which is between none and and strict is lax so how the lax work is uh, the same same thing a user will log in they'll have the session id set to domain and they are in attacker.com or any any xyz.com and when they click on mybag.com as a get request because of course like you know when you're redirecting when you're clicking something usually it's a get request and if it's a get request browser will include the session token because it's just a get user is not doing any mutation mutating operation and that's the csrf issue right csrf only occurs when when someone is trying to mute it some object or, or muted op perform muted operations in the uh, in the uh, victim site so here it will initiate the get request it will attach all the session tokens and then the user will have seamless experience because he's already locked in and and it, like you know let's say attacker.com says view balance right that's a that's a hyperlink it clicks on it it goes to buy blank and and bank and then it's able to see like you know balance However, if attacker.com says, oh, transfer money and it's a post request from this account to my account, if it clicks on it and it, the browser detects, oh, that's a post request, it will not attach this token. And that's how this prevents the cross-site request forgery. Now, one thing to note here is uh, the cross-site request, like, you know, uh, the lacks, so as, as I said, like the browser only attaches the request, like the session cookie if it's a GET request, or the request is coming from the top level navigation bar. So suppose if there is a script initiating the request to mybank.com, in this case, browser will not attach the request. It has to be clicked by the user. If the user clicks on it, then it will then then the the cookies will be attached. So that's a that's a really like you know a, a caveat there. So here are some examples. So if if there's an href link like, and if the user clicks on it, then yeah, cookies will be sent. If it's none or lax, if it's a pre-render, uh, which is another feature uh, like you know uh, which pre-renders the page or cache the page in another language. So that that's also sent. Uh, like if that's the case then yeah it's a normal or lax then cookies will be sent and as i said it's a get method then it will be sent now this uh, i think google chrome 80 version 80 has made by default all the cookies will be marked as lax so it started breaking some websites uh, because like you know they were not expecting there was like uh, awesome cross-site communication without any restriction and now we have lax so only get request could work through like if you have post it's not gonna send the cookie you users have to log in again iframe uh, again you have to log in ajax image so all of this you have to re-log in yourself in order to uh, get the cookie 
Now this seems to be a really good mitigation for CSRF, isn't it? Like there is no easy way to bypass this or there is no visible way. So why do we care about implementing anti-CSRF token? Why we can just put the lax and then just leave with that, right? And let me let me show you real quick what the lax looks like. So if I go here, give me one second. Uh, let's look at the browser. Yeah, here. So if you go to the inspect like for any website and, and go to the application and then go to the cookie, as you can see here, there's the same site and right now it's set as none. Of course, none of this is session token, so it's set, set as learn. However, if it's a session or something, it will be set as lax or strict. And then it will not allow like, you know, cross site communication, right? That's, that's easy. So let's talk about how do we bypass this? So there, there, there are few caveat to it like this this mitigation and that's why anti csrf token is still needed one is what if there is a sensitive action with cat request right uh, and sometime some website i've seen those uh, and if they have a get request with the sensitive information then uh, they are easily could fall into the csrf category next you can always convert the the current all the web frameworks uh, nowadays allows different HTTP verbs and, and post to get is very common like you can use put and, and other methods as well so what if I can just go into my proxy and say like I want to change request method to post or let's say post to get and, and I change it and and then I, I put this as payload and, and execute it in the in the victims browser that might work right so there are there are few ways to bypass this mitigation and that's why uh, even the OWASP recommends this is like you know not a primary defense but a defense in depth so the, your primary defense should always be a good reliable anti csrf token which is random non guessable unique every time user logs in and and of course among all the other users it ha it has to have all those attributes and on top you should recommend any developers to put this lax restriction to have like defense in depth in case your uh, some like in case your anti csr token is not good enough so so i wanted to call this out like you know uh, or avoid this confusion between the same side and the csrf uh, i know it it's not very straightforward but i hope uh, i i made it clear if not then please feel free to ask me any questions you have about this I'm happy to answer this. Uh, of course, if I missed anything, feel free to comment me here as well. Uh, don't forget to uh, like the video and, and subscribe to my channel for weekly episodes. Uh, and that's all. Yeah, I'll see you all next week. Bye.